to be here again with you. As you know, Pastor Gary has invited me to be with you for a few weeks, and some of you were here last week. And I am just so honored to be with you on this Trinity Sunday. It's a beautiful time to reflect on just the unity in the church and what God has done for us. We're going to open up our books to page 94 and we're going to begin our service today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, and forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may go light in your will, and walk in your ways, in the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his name's sake, God forgives all of our sins. And as a called, ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're going to begin our gathering hymn, page uh, number 113, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Amen.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also be with you. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, at first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped. Before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, 
when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the area its limit, so that the water might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, there I was beside him, like a master worker. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. Speak to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of John. Glory to you, Lord. Now Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will not take he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, and for this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. I read from the Gospel of St. John. Praise to you, o Christ. Everybody, please have a seat. Get relaxed. You know it's a little warm. We want to welcome Deacon Karen back. I don't know how long she's been gone, but I haven't seen her for maybe a year. I don't know. <laughs> yes. yes, it's really wonderful. And of course, Deacon Lori is my savior here. <laughs> God is so good, and, and, and today, it's just a beautiful day. I got to celebrate with you Pentecost Sunday, and today is the celebration of the Trinity, Trinity Sunday. The unfathomable, miraculous mystery of our God in three persons. It's just amazing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we know that this doctrine doesn't exist in the Bible, but many people before us, millennial ago, gathered together at the church of, uh, at the church, the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD and deliberated, I want to say this big word, the homeosis, the, cons cons see, the consubstantial essence of God. What, what all that means is the oneness of God. And you can just imagine, you know, all the scriptures that portray who God is and how God has revealed himself, it's very hard to, to picture in our mind. It's hard to understand one God, three persons that are distinctly different, but equally interrelated and divine. You know, it's really hard to con concept. It's very abstract. And I think when we were in our Sunday school classes, we couldn't conceive it. But I do remember an illustration. Maybe you do too. Water, H2O, right? Water has that liquid form, it has that, you know, that solid form, the gas, and it, and it has the solid form, the, you know, the ice, the, the liquid form, and then the gas. And so that was, I don't know, did anybody else have that illustration in your mind when you were younger about trying to understand God in, in three persons? No? Nobody had that? That must have been an East Coast Northern way of, of explaining it. But um, today, we celebrate God in, in marvelous ways, the mysteries of what he did when the triune God was together. First of all, the logos of God, the word of God became flesh and dwelt upon us. That's kind of hard to understand, right? And then the death, the burial, and resurrection, and why God would have his only begotten son go through that for our salvation. Again, the mystery of God and his great wisdom. And then the third, which we celebrated last week, was Pentecost sending of his Holy Spirit to empower the church. This separates us from all religions. If you didn't, you know, think about that before, there's no comparison. Our God is three in one. I have something I want to share with you. Maybe I'll have a chance to keep it or you can hear hand these out. this icon to share the fruits of his own meditation on the mystery of the Trinity. 
but also to share this for his fellow monks who were dealing with unrest, political unrest, in the time that they were living. It was a way to keep their hearts centered on God, the living presence of God. And I'm going to ask you to think about that. Has anyone ever seen this before? Okay. When you look at this picture, if anybody's brave enough to say, I'm not going to give you 20 or 30 minutes to meditate as I had to do in class, but what comes to mind when you see this picture painted of the Trinity? What, what just comes to mind real quickly off the top of your head? The relationship between the three. The relationship between the three. Beautiful relationship. God is a God of relation. And then we're included on the top of the picture. We're there. We're there at the table. We're seated during the, we're seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. We're seated at the table. Holy Spirit and Father. We're included in this picture. Anything else that comes up in your mind? Does it stir your hearts to know that our God is powerful, great in one? He's given us every part of revelation that we need to know about him. And even when we remember the Gospels, and saying, you know, show us the Father. He says, if you haven't seen me, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, he says, Thomas. Jesus was the exact representation of the Father, but the three distinct folks, the Logos of the Word came to flesh, came into flesh. The church fathers saw this unity of the Logos, the Pneuma, which is the Spirit, and the Sophia, the wisdom of God. And at the Council of Constantinople in 381, they clarified the function of the Holy Spirit. 381 AD. But throughout the course of history in our church, we have failed to recognize this personhood of the Holy Spirit. And more of the emphasis has been on salvation, right? Sola gracias, right? Martin Luther, I want, I want you to hear what he had to say about the Holy Spirit. He says, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel enlightened me with his gifts and sanctified and kept me in true faith. In the same way he calls and gathers and enlightens and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. He states that the Spirit binds himself to the Word of God. Echoing Jesus from our, from our gospel today, when the Spirit of truth comes, he's going to guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The work of the Spirit is to call us to faith in Christ through the gospel, and we cannot come to Christ unless the Holy Spirit leads us. And we know that elsewhere in the scriptures it says that only God can call a heart to himself. And you and I think we have to muster up a lot of strength and, and go save the world, which he wants us to do, but he wants us to share in love. When I was coming to uh, today's service, a song that came through my mind, which hadn't come to my mind for, I'm not even going to begin to let you know how long. But, and they'll know that we are Christians by our love. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And they'll know that we are Christians by our love. I think today, what God would put my heart and hopefully in your heart, no matter what we understand about the Holy Spirit, the fruit of Him being in our lives is love. And that is what draws all of us together in one. We may have different forms of worship. We might have the Pentecostal, the Charismatic, the Evangelical, the Liturgical. We might have all these kinds of sects and churches, not sects, but just churches and ways of worship all around. But we all believe the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity heart of God and how we want to view him and how we want to open ourselves to view him even more in our lives will give us greater understanding of that intimacy that we find at the table because we feel and when we feel God's presence it's through the Holy Spirit and he's here right now he's walking among, dwelling among us and he fills our hearts the Holy Spirit enlightens dead hearts and opens blind eyes to recognize and to receive Christ. 
Plenty of scriptures are shared by Paul about this. And he says, you know, to the church of Corinth, I came not with the persuasions, persuasion of men, with carefully construed words, but I came in a demonstration of the spirit and of the power, not with the wisdom of men, but the power of God. And God's wisdom, he says, was predestined before the ages and made manifest to Paul, at least, on that road to Damascus. The Apostle Paul said the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. And we just heard an opportunity for the church, the Lutheran church, to receive that gift that was given from a church that was no longer going to use that land to demonstrate that the kingdom of God is going to continue through the Lutheran church, through ministries that God is going to unfold into the hearts of his people as time goes on. This is not for the past. God did not give truth to the church and the apostles at the beginning. God is continuing to put truth into our hearts and he uses you and I to reveal whatever that is, to show us how we can reach this world that is so fixed on themselves, fixed on the lies and so forth. The scriptures mention so many times that God, the Holy Spirit, is the one who sanctifies us. He's the one that helps us become holy. He helps us transform because he opens up our eyes to see what Jesus is saying to us in the scriptures. And it's the word of God that pierces our hearts and makes us change and follow his path. It brings new revelations, new understandings to the word of God at times. We've read the scriptures so many times, not only this gospel and, and so much of chapter 14 through 17 of John talks about this intimacy with the Father. We know in chapter 17, Jesus is saying, Father, I pray that they are one as we are one. And that is through the Holy Spirit. We can feel that communion with him, through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit gathers us into one church, one body. And he, call, he calls us to be diligent, to preserve the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And we all we do is hear about conflict coming. It saddens my heart even as I was coming today to think about it the splits, the splinters, the attitudes that we've had in our churches that have caused division and pain because we're pointing the finger saying, well, you should be like me. Well, I should be like you. And I've even had churches say, unless you take communion in this church, you're not really a believer. I've heard those things before. Throughout the history of the church, we haven't been very good at keeping this bond of unity and peace, but it's through love. And so we have to check our hearts each day and say, am I walking in the love of Christ? Or am I following my own selfish dictates of what I think, my reason? Guys, wisdom is higher than our, ours. We don't understand so many things. We, we don't understand most things. We understand a little. But what we do is we ask God to reveal things to us. So today, just real briefly, I just want us to remember that we are at that table. We are seated at that table. You have to have that picture in your mind when you're going through difficult times. How can I live this life that Christ called me to live? Know that you're not alone. You're his heir. You're his child. Paul calls you an heir of God. All the spiritual blessings are yours at the table in fellowship, in communion with the Holy Spirit, with God the Father and God the Son. You're there. Your position is there, not here on earth. So nothing that he gives you that you're going to have to deal with in life, you're going to have to do alone. Well, God, it's hard for me to forgive that person. It's really hard to, to have a positive attitude as I'm driving on 95 at times. I mean, I, I check the balance 24 hours a day and miss it so many times. But I know that I can change. I know that the Holy Spirit hears my confession and I start back up again. If ever we're facing anything that's difficult today, which I know that you are, see yourself seated in your identity and know that you're not alone. God's power will be with you and help you to do what he wants you to do. The second thing I want us to just remember is that we need to ask for wisdom. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of truth, will guide us into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but that whatever he hears, he will speak. We have always been living in the last days, but even more so, we are definitely living in the last days. And the Bible says, where people are lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. We need desperately the movement of the Holy 
Holy Spirit to stir the hearts of those that are in our life, that are in our influence, to stir their hearts to see that Jesus does love them, that he offers a plan, he offers a purpose, he offers them a mission in life. I work at the VA, and I work with folks that have a lot of drug and alcohol problems and are lost, very, very lost, because they don't have a purpose. They don't know who they can call. They don't even realize that they can call to be in the image of God, and they're fighting it with all tooth and nail. They're fighting that reality, and when they fight that reality, it causes them to go down and down and down, because we can't survive in this world by ourselves with our own wisdom. Earthly wisdom doesn't lead us anywhere. We need discernment. We need discernment. We need to test the spirits. James, I love James because the Lord's brother, he writes about two kinds of wisdom. He says, who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. And here's the key. But if you harbor self-envy or self-ambition and envy in your hearts, do not boast about the truth. Such wisdom doesn't come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder in every evil practice. It sounds like our world, but it sounds like the world that has always been. Envy and selfish ambition leads people without Christ to do what they do. But he says the wisdom that comes from heaven this is how we test it. And those who are in college, I wish my girls were here. Those who are studying and whatever you're doing, if you're trying to decide if this is from God, wisdom from God is pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. And peacemakers who sow in peace will reap a harvest of righteousness. So many times, and I'm not going to go through my life like history right now, but so many times I've been faced with evil, right in the face. And it's hard, and it's oppressive, and you don't really know what it is. It's just this kind of weird feeling that you get. And one time I was on a backpacking trip, and there was a lot of chaos with a group of women. And I was very new to the scriptures at the time, and when I opened this up, I said, you know, I think there's some selfish ambition going on here. I think there's some envy, there's some you know, women can be, nick, 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 pat, 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 you know, talk about each other. And that was going on in spirit in a Christian backpacking trip. And that was going on. And the Lord said, this is what's going on. So I could understand it. You know, I need to understand what is going on. Why am I feeling this way? It's lack of peace. It's lack of unity. Selfish ambition. Envy. So then James says, what do we need to do? Well, we need to submit to God. Resist the devil. And you will flee. Come near to God, and He will come near to you. Humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up. When I was in Japan as a missionary, I was one of maybe 10 to 15 English speaking folks in City of Ube, where I was. And of course, with blonde hair, I was an attraction. I mean, uh, just lots of boys and all that. But when I met an English speaking person, I gravitated to them because I wanted to speak English, right? And so I met this woman, and she was a missionary. And what was she a missionary of? She was a missionary of the Baha'i faith. And I was very clueless about the Baha'i faith. And she talked about Jesus, and she talked about the Holy Spirit. She goes, well, why don't you come to dinner? And because I had, not broken, but I had torn a ligament and I was in a cast, she had to come and pick me up. So I came to her house for dinner. And I didn't know that other people from the Baha'i church were gonna be there at dinner. I didn't know that we were gonna be watching an indoctrination video for the evening entertainment. And so I sat in humility and, you know, saying, God, you're with me. And it was just an amazing experience because they were trying to tell me that the Holy Spirit had come back, Jesus had come back, like we're all waiting for him to return. And he came into the heart of one of their prophets and that this has been going on for a period of time. And this and that about the faith. And, and they, they're looking at me, you know, don't you get it? You know, he came back. And what I felt was the Holy Spirit grabbed my heart as tight as could be. And the words that came to me, Kim, 
If I would have come back, don't you think I would have told you? It was beautiful. Another beautiful encounter with God. Well, it was so much pressure and so much. I had to run to the room and bawl my eyes out because I said that's how powerful that experience was. But I had the assurance and the truth that no matter what someone or philosophy might try to lead me astray, God has my heart and he has your heart too. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Do not worry, resist the devil and he will flee. Spirit of truth, again, is the Holy Spirit. And the third thing I just want to end with today is just to say that we need to glorify Jesus. The Holy Spirit glorifies him. And Jesus says, all authority has been given from the Father to me. What I have, is, what the Father has is mine. And I will take what is mine and declare it to you. That is every spiritual blessing. I don't know why we walk around and lack. I don't know why we think that we're lacking in life. I think it's just our flesh that sees and looks and, 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 and observes what other people have and we don't even realize it's happening. But we don't lack anything. No good thing. Every perfect gift comes from above. And God wants to pour out these good gifts upon us every day. He's the creator God. He provides us daily what we need. And so today, this just ask that you would continue to remember that you are seated with him, okay? That all you need to do is ask for wisdom, and all you have to do, and all I have to do is glorify Jesus and all I say and do. I thought this would be a motto. We walk for the glory of God. It should be a motto tattooed on my forehead. We walk for the glory of God. When we do all for the glory of God, we will see wonders, we will see miracles, we will see things that we haven't seen before happen in our lives, in, in our church, in our community. And I know that it's easier said than done. It takes your commitment today. And so we're called to celebrate the Trinity in our relationship, not only here at St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church, but with the church at large here in Palm Beach County and in our state. We're called to unify ourselves. We're called to love one another. We're called not to be pointing the finger at one another, Call to embrace whatever God is going to lead us in the future because he is coming back. We don't know if it's going to be in our time or not, but do not be afraid. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. Let's pray. Father, thank you for just so much that you reveal to us each day of our lives through your word and through your spirit. Thank you that you give us everything we need. There's nothing that we're lacking. I pray right now as our hearts are centered on you, maybe we're sitting at the table with you right now. Maybe we're taking a conversation or we're just letting you know what we need. That you are there. And you love us and you'll provide whatever that is today. I pray that we would be bold enough to ask. We'd be bold enough to ask for wisdom and truth in our situation. And we'd be bold enough to follow your ways and not our ways. We pray that in the name of Jesus. Thank you.
Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen taste and see that the lord is good come to the banquet for all his power Thank you. 
toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.